Okay, in this video, we'll go over problems in uh, week five that are related to uh, probability and statistics. Before we look at those problems, let's first recall a basic formula in calculating probability. Uh, this is a very common uh, situation. Suppose that we have, um, we have uh, finitely many um, outcomes like here, and each outcome, they are equally likely to happen. And then uh, the way to calculate probability Say I want to calculate uh, the probability of this uh, specific event. And then the formula says, all we need to calculate is to uh, find the fraction, which is uh, the number of uh, valid cases and divided by the number of all cases. Uh, for example, in here, the number of valid cases is one, two, three, four. So that's uh, all we care about. Or we say it's desired cases, right? So it will be four. And then uh, the number of all cases will be uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then you plus uh, the, the other four. So this will be nine, right? It'll be nine. Okay, so for this case, the probability uh, of this event will just be four over nine. So essentially just ask the fraction of all cases that are what we wanted. Uh, so in this sense, uh, the, uh, the computation of probability in many cases in many situations, it's reduced to the counting problem because essentially we just need to calculate the number of all cases and the number of valid cases. Now, like the counting problem, we also have uh, the multiplication principle for probability. It is that state, suppose we want to achieve a certain goal and we want to find the probability to achieve this goal. And let's say uh, we can uh, separate the uh, the, this go into uh, several steps. So for here, we say three steps, step one and step two and step three. Okay, let's say we have uh, the probability to achieve step one is one half. Now, after step one is done, right? And then based on this, we say, okay, uh, based on step one, uh, then the probability to get a step two is one third. And then based on step one and step two, the probability to get step three is uh, three, quarter, three quarters then the, the final probability to achieve this goal will be the multiplication of these three uh, probabilities together. For this case, what we get is one A. So this is the uh, multiplication principle for, for probability. Essentially, it's the same as the multiplication principle in the counting problem. Okay, all right. Now let's look at our problems. Let's look at problem number one. The problem says this, there are three different colors uh, blue, red, and yellow of balls in a box, right? Okay. And June, randomly pick one ball. If the probability of getting a red ball is one, uh, one a, uh, three A's, and the probability of getting yellow ball is uh, two fifths. The question is, what is the least number of blue ball uh, in the box? Okay, so by, uh, by the basic formula of computing probability, uh, we basically just know this. We know the fraction, so we know three, uh, three A's are, are red balls, right? If you look at uh, the collection of all those balls, three A's are red, and then uh, two fifths are yellow, right? Two fifths are yellow. And from here, we say, okay, so the, the, uh, the fraction of, um, of uh, blue balls will be one minus three over eight minus two over five, and then after you combine uh, two fractions using common denominator, you'll get a will be uh, nine over 40. Okay, will be nine over 40. Then these are, so nine over 40 are blue. And okay, so from here we get it because the number of balls, they are integers. So from here, here we get at least, I mean, nine over 40, right? So at least there should be 40 balls. So at least uh, there are, uh, 40 balls, right? 40 balls, uh, then at least, right? So it's at least that there should be nine uh, blue balls, right? Okay, so the, the answer is nine. Question number two, a circular spanner is divided into four sections as shown here. So this green, red, blue, and yellow. The angle at the center of the circle in the sections labeled green, blue, each measure 90. So this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree. An arrow is attached to the center of 
the uh, the spinner attached to the center of the spinner, the arrow is spun once. What is the probability that arrow lands on either red or yellow? Okay, so this is these two are the region that we are looking for, right? So we're looking for the probability that the arrow is either on the red or on the yellow. When we look at the pictures clearly, right? Clearly, red plus yellow equals one half, right? Because this is 90, this is 90, so it's 180, uh, which is one half of uh, 360, right? So it's clearly, it's one, uh, one half of, of the spanner, right? It's one half the spanner in terms of uh, areas, one half the spanner, right? In, we say, let's say, in areas. Okay, now because everything is equal likely, so we get the probability will just be one half, right? If we randomly uh, spin the arrow, so with the probability one half, it will, let, it will uh, land on either red or yellow. Problem number three, uh, Jacob spins the following two spinners and then adds the number together. What is the probability that the sum is greater than 10? All right, so we apply the uh, the basic formula. So the, let's recall the basic formula. The probability equals uh, the number of valid, uh, let's say we just use pairs because here basically we get two pairs, right? If we get one number from here, one number from here. So it's, uh, it's uh, a pair of numbers, right? So number of valid pairs and number of all possible pairs, right? All possible pairs. Okay, now what is uh, what is the number of all possible pairs? Uh, we use, just use the multiplication principle, right? You use, use the multiplication principle. There are three choice for here and three choice for here. So the total will be three times three, which equals nine. So there are nine different pairs, right? There are nine different pairs. We have three choice, we have three choice here. So it's nine pairs. Now, okay, so then what it means we get the denominator uh, uh, the nine. And then we need to, we are left to find out are the valid, valid pairs. Now, what are the valid pairs? The requirement is the greater than 10, right? Okay, so let's find, let's find those uh, valid pairs, or we say desired pairs. Uh, we can just leave them out, right? Okay, so what we can do is we have three, nine, we have five, six, five, nine, and then we have seven, four, like seven, six, and seven, nine. So that's uh, all the possible um, valid pairs when they add up, the sum is greater than 10. Well, how many do we have? So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so number of valid pairs equals six, right? So we have six in total. All right, so then we get the, uh, the probability by definition is just the fraction uh, six over nine, uh, which we simplified is two thirds. Question number four. Uh, total, uh, total three sta uh, standardized. What's the probability that the product of three numbers is even? All right, so here we have uh, standard three dice. Okay, uh, because standard, which means numbers from one to six, one to six, one to six, right? On the numbers on the faces of those three dice. All right. Now we are looking for is the product, right? So if you want to multiply them together, we want to get it's even. So this is what we are looking for, right? We, look, we are looking for. Okay, now let's, let's just apply the, pro, uh, the formula, right? Probability we can do is, uh, let's say, uh, okay, so we say method one, let's just use the basic form. So probability equals the number of all cases, right? and the number of uh, valid cases, right? Valid cases. Okay, uh, number of all cases. So here basically what we have is a triple, right? We have a triple, okay? Because three numbers. Um, we can use the multiplication principle. We have six choice for the first, the six choice for the second, six choice for the third. So the number of all cases, the, the, all, all the triples, right? So which are the triples, we have six times, six times, six, right? So this is just by uh, multiplication principle. Multiplication principle, right? Okay, of countings, right? It's time six. Now then, well, let's figure out the number of valid cases. Uh, for this case, um, for this problem, it's more convenient 
to find the number of invalid cases, all right? That's why, because you see, uh, in order for the multiplication to be even, that means at least one of is even, right? But if you consider the um, opposite case, that means all of them has to be odd. Okay, so we look at uh, the invalid case. So, okay, we look at uh, invalid cases, so right? invalid cases, that means uh, the product is odd, which means uh, every number is odd, every number, the multiplicity is odd, every number is odd, and then we get the number is what? Uh, that means we have, we have triple, right? Each one is odd, then we have three choice for this, it has to be our number, so it's one, three, five, and you have three choice for that, three choice for this, then total will be three times three times three, right? Three times three times three, okay. All right, so then we will have this one which just equals the value cases will just six times six times six and minus three times three times three, right? In minus in value case and divided by six times six, six. And then, okay, all right, so that's uh, that's what you have, right? Okay, now, uh, well, then what you have, you just get a one minus uh, three times three times three divided by six times six times six. So it's one minus one over eight, right? So this divided by two, this is two, and this is two, so one eight. So this is one over seven, right? So one over seven. Or uh, you can do this, okay. So I can do method two. I just find the opposite probability, right? So that means, which is the probability of getting an odd product, right? Getting product. And then you say, okay, because let's look at the product, as we said before, if the product is odd, right? That means each one has to be got odd number. This has to be odd number. This has to be odd number, right? Okay. And then uh, what's the probability of getting odd number here? So which is one half to get odd, right? One half, so probability. Probability to get odd is one half. Uh, this is the, the first one, right? Okay, you just use the multiplication principle. Okay, so the first uh, die, you get the odd is one half, and this is also one half, and this is also one half. Then we use the multiplication principle. The opposite, we get the opposite. We get the opposite probability ability will just equals to this first step, you get our number for the first die is one half, then you multiply. Uh, in the second step, we'll look at uh, the uh, the second die, you get all this again, one half, and that is one half, so it's one over ace. And then from here, we get uh, the, 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 up, the required, right? We get the required probability, where you go to one minus one of ace, so it's, uh, seven over eight. Okay. All right. Uh, question number five. Randomly select uh, two vertices of hexagon. So here we have hexagon. What is the probability uh, this should be regular? It should be regular. So this is missing here. Randomly select two vertices of, of a regular hexagon. What is the probability that the line passes through the center of um, of uh, the uh, the hexagon. Okay, so for example, right? So if I choose this, this of course is not valid. Uh, but if I choose this, then this is valid because it passes through the, the center of passes through the center of the regular hexagon. Okay. All right. Now for this, we can use say a uh, method one. We can just use the, the definition, right? So the basic formula. Right? You say okay, let's use uh, the basic formula. And then we know the probability equals the number of all uh, pairs. Right? So here, because we're looking for a pair of vertices, right? And then number of all valid or desired pairs, whatever you call it, right? Uh, the number of all pairs, what, what do you do? Because you have six vertices, right? And then from six, you choose two. Uh, what it says, so it's six choose two. Um, if you can use this formula, you get a six choose two to that's one, which is which is 15, right? Which is 15. Or you can just count uh, one by one, but you get just 
get a 15 as well. Now let's look at the, uh, the number of valid pairs. Uh, let's see how many we have. So this is, this is one, right? So this is one pair. And then you can have, uh, you can have another uh, valid pair. So this is one, this is two, right? And then you can have, um, you can have, um, uh, you can have, let's say this, right? So this is again, this is the third one. You know, three, you will get, uh, you have uh, three valid pairs. Uh, then we simplify this to so three or 15, which is one fifth, right? Which is one fifth. Okay, so by the basic formula, we get the probability is, um, is uh, one fifth. Okay, now let's look at method two. We can use symmetry instead of using uh, the formula. We can use symmetry. Let's look at this. Let's use symmetry. Okay, uh, we can fix. Okay, because um, all six vertices of this regular hexagon is um, um, is uh, symmetric, so we can just fix one of them. Right? Let's say okay, we can fix. Let's say we fix this one. So fix because of that they are symmetry. Let's fix this, and then uh, let's choose the the third one, right? So let, let let's choose the second one, and then we have five to one, two, three, four. Five, right? I have five choice. Okay, so that means the total number of possible scenarios is five, right? Five of them. Um, which one, which are valid? And this is only valid one. So this is the valid one because when we connect them, it'll pass through the center. So we get a valid one will be one and the total. So this is the total, right? So total equals five. And then we get the probability is one or five. Okay, so this is a special feature of um, our probability compared with the cunning problem. That means we don't have to always reduce the cunning problem. We can actually utilize the symmetry of the problem and then find the shortcut to solve the problem. Problem number six. Uh, Kate randomly pick two numbers, A and B, uh, from the set one, two, and draw the line Y equals AX plus B on the corner plane. What is the probability that the line at the x-axis and the y-axis, they form a triangle with area that is greater than uh, one half? Okay, so here we have a line. That's y equals ax plus b. This is a random line because uh, the coefficients can be chosen from one, two, and this is also one, two. Okay, so we want to calculate the probability. All right, so we just apply this basic formula. Probability equals uh, the number of all possible lines. And then the numerator is the number of valid lines. So here valid lines means uh, the area uh, formed by the uh, area of the triangle formed by the line and X axis, Y axis is greater than one half. Okay. Uh, obviously, because each coefficient has two choices by multiplication principle, the total number of lines is uh, two times two, which is four. Okay, so what we need to figure out is the number of valid lines. And this you can check. Uh, we have two options. One is y equals x plus two, and the other one is or y equals, uh, this is two x uh, plus two. Now for these two lines, uh, we'll have the area is greater than one half. Uh, let's check that. Okay, if we draw this uh, x, y coordinate, uh, this is x and this is y. Okay, so this is the origin. Let's look at this line. Uh, let's look at the line that y equals x uh, plus two. Y equals x plus two is right here. So this is the line. This is the line, which is y equals x uh, plus two, right? When x is zero, y is two. When x is negative two, y is zero. And then you can see uh, this is two, this is two. So the area of this one is two, which is which is greater than uh, one half. So for this one, the area equals two, which is of course is greater than one half. Now uh, let's look at, um, let's look at uh, this line y equals 2x plus 2. 
Now this line uh, passing through when x is zero or two, when x is uh, is negative one. If x is negative one, uh, then it's one half. Then it says it's zero. Okay, so this is the line y equals. Okay, so this is the line that y equals the two x uh, two x plus two. And if you look at the area of this, so the area of this will be equals one because two times one divided by two is one. Okay, so for this one, the area is one, which is again is bigger than one half. All right, so therefore we have we have um, we uh, after we double check, we find we have two uh, lines. So the answer of probability will be two over four, which is one half. Problem number seven: A frog starts from the origin, which is right here. On the real axis, in each step, it jump to the left or right uh, with equal dis uh, with distance one and equal probability. So that means one half to the left or one half to the right. What is the probability that the frog will reach point two, which is right here, point two, for the first time in no more than four steps? Okay, uh, for this problem, we can look at different cases because no more than four steps. Uh, there are only two scenarios. Either it reaches two in two steps, right? So case one, uh, reach uh, uh, two for the first time in two steps. And for this one, we say, okay, if it's four steps, so case one, right? For this one, we say, okay, what you can do? Maybe I use case one. Then uh, what happens is you first jump, then jump to the right, and then jump to the right, right? So that's the uh, the only scenario. And it can reach two in, in uh, two steps. And this step, we know the probability to right is one half, the probability to right is one half, then multiply by multiplication principle. So it's one half times one half equals uh, 104. All right, so this is the probability for case one. And then we can look at case two. Case two is reach two. So, okay, reach two in, Four steps. You might be asking, how about three steps? And it's easy to see, there's no way it can reach uh, two in three steps. Okay, so in four steps, and then in four steps, what we can do is uh, go to right, uh, then jumps back, and then jumps uh, to one and jumps to four. Okay, jump two. Okay, so this is this is uh, two step, uh, um, four steps, right? And each step, we know this is one half, this is one half, this is one half, and this is one half. So the probability why one half times one half times one half times one half, this is one of eight. So this is one, one um, way you can go by, um, by, four, by um, uh, four steps. And then you can also do like this. You can also jump, you say, okay, I jump from z, uh, 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 to the left first, right? And then, I uh, jump it back to zero, right? Uh, maybe I put it here. So first jump to uh, negative one to the left, then negative one jump to the right, and then to the right, to the right, right? Okay, so it's one half, one half, one half, one half. You see, this is the second case, the second scenario that it do be do uh, in four steps. So the second one again will be one half times one half times one half, times one half, right? Okay, and then uh, we'll get, uh, so this is not one over, one over six, so this is uh, one over 16, so this is one over 16. And then here, we also get this is uh, one over, one over 16, right? We get this one over 16. Okay, so now we add them together, so what's the total? We add all the up, uh, one, one quarter, one of 16, one of 16, so we add a number. So it's one quarter plus one of 16 and a plus one of 16. So we get the final probability. If you combine all cases together, it is three over eight. Problem number eight, Alan and Bruce. Okay. So this is Alan and Bruce, right? Alan and Bruce, they attend a math exam that consists of five, uh, five uh, uh, multiple choice problems. We have five problems, five problems, right? Okay, uh, the correct answer is each, each problem has five options. Now, <clears throat> the, the correct answer is worth one point. 
And the long answer is what's your point? Alan knows how to solve the first three. Okay, so four three is correct. Knows how to solve the first three. Um, for the for the last two, uh, he's not able. He is able to narrow down to two options, which is he's not completely sure, but he's narrowed down two options. Okay, uh, two options. Okay. Um, Bruce knows how to solve the uh, the the four problems, the first four problems. Uh, he knows how to do it, but for the last one, he has no idea, and he randomly picks one. Randomly picks one. okay. So for the last one, he, it's uh, he uh, he basically he's not able to narrow down anything, so he has to randomly pick um, pick one option, right? And a big option. The question is, what's the probability? What's the probability that Alan's final score is no less than Bruce? All right. Uh, basically, here what we have is. Alan is not sure about the last two uh, questions, and each one he has to face two options. Right? He is able to narrow down, uh, eliminate three other options, and Blues is the last one. Right? The last one he has completely no idea. Uh, he has to basically has just randomly pick one of the five. Okay. Uh, what's the probability that Alan's final score is no less than Blues? Okay. Well, you see. They all, for the first uh, three problems, they are correct. Then in order for Allen's final score is no less than Blue's, we have two scenarios. Case one, Allen solves four problems. A correctly solved four problems, and Blue's also solves four problems, right? Now, uh, Let's see what's the probability Alan solved the problem four problems. That means he solved one he solved one problem correct and the other one is wrong. Uh, the chance is one half or one half, but you can switch it. So we know Alan solved the, the, the probability Alan solves the four problems. Then we equivalent to say he solved one of them correct. That is to say one of the last two correct. Right? Okay. Uh, the probability equals uh, one half, probably the one half, and blues uh, solve the uh, the four problem, which means the last one is wrong. Right, so the last one is wrong, and then the probability is uh, four or five. Right, it's four or five. So we solve the last one wrong, which is uh, four or five, and then the, the we get the probability combined probability by multiplication principle. Will be uh, Alan for step for Alan. Uh, it's one half. He got uh, one of the last two problems correct, and then Bruce got the uh, last problem wrong. So it's well, he multiplied together is two over five. Right? It's two over five. So that's case one. Now case two. Case two is Alan solves all these five problems, which you're gonna say in the last two correct. Last two. Also correct, right? The last two also correct. And we know the probability is two times one half times one half, which is which is one of four. Now for this case, we don't we, we don't care about uh, how how blues did because Alan already got a full score. So regardless how blues did, the score of Alan is not going to be uh, less than blues. So we, okay, now we need to do it just to combine together, right? So okay, so then combine so the final probability. Probability is just combine them, right? So combine them is four of here. The first case, the first case, uh, here, the first case, the first case is two of five, right? Right here, and the second case is uh, one quarter, right? So I would just add them together, and that we have, we get a equals uh, twenty over thirteen, thirteen over twenty, and this is the final probability. Question number nine. A square is divided into eight congruent isosceles right triangles as shown in the left figure. And you randomly select two of these um, uh, three triangles and the shade of red. What is the probability the resulting figure is symmetric? Right? So like this, this guy is symmetric because if you fold along this uh, symmetric line, uh, it, the, the two parts overlap. Okay. Um, we we'll just use the basic form to calculate. Let's recall how we calculate the probability. Equals 
the number of all pairs, right? And then the numerator is the number of all valid pairs. What's the number of all pairs? I say, okay, what's the number of all pairs? The number of all pairs, right? So the number of all pairs, because in total we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, eight, right? So okay, basically from six, uh, eight uh, triangles, you choose two of them, right? That's eight to choose two, right? Okay, so then uh, we apply the formula, it's uh, two times this, which is, uh, which is 28, right? So in total, we have 28 different pairs. Now, then we need to figure out, okay, what's the number of valid pairs? That means after you choose uh, those two pairs, you still get the symmetry. What we can do is we say, okay, let's use symmetry lines. If I use, say, if I use this symmetry line, so this I say case one, right? If I use this symmetry line, then I get one pair, two pair, three pair and a four pair, right? I have four pair. Okay, so I get a four pairs for this, uh, for this, uh, um, for this uh, line. And now you say, if you choose this uh, symmetrical line, then again, you get four pairs. So one pair, two pair, three pair, and a four pair. Okay, again, get a four pair. And also, also you can say, okay, what if I choose uh, this symmetrical line, you again get a one pair, two pair, three pair, four pair. And if you choose, uh, this symmetric line, again, you get a one pair, two pair, uh, three pair, and four pair, so pair. Okay, so basically we get a four pair. All right, so the conclusion is four valid, the four valid pairs for each symmetric uh, line, for each symmetric line, right? And in total, you have four symmetric lines, and then the uh, this one will be four times four, which is 16. And therefore the final answer will be 16 over 28, which we simplified is four over seven. Question number 10. Uh, an unfair coin is flipped 900 time, times, and then the head comes up around 600 times. If this coin is flipped four times, what is most likely the probability that there are most likely the probability that there are more hats than uh, tails? Okay, so from the first piece of information, if you a flip, right, it says flip nine hundred times, then we get from six hundred hats, and this tells us the probability probability of getting a hat. Uh, if you flip once, right, the probability of getting head is approximately 600 over 900, which is two of three. You see, uh, this is uh, basically uh, the intuitive definition of probability is just the long time frequency, right? So for example, when we say, if you have a fair coin, uh, we say the probability of getting head is one half. What does that mean? That just means say, if I flip the coin 1000 times, around 500 times, I'm going to get a uh, head, right? So that's the, uh, the uh, intuitive meaning um, of, uh, of probability. All right, so here we have uh, the probability of getting head if we once is around two thirds. All right, so that's the first step we get. And then we are going to look at uh, uh, what is there are more heads, right? So we need to get more heads uh, than uh, tails. Right, a flip, uh, flip like four times, right? So and this means we have two cases. So in case one, uh, there are uh, three heads, three heads and one tail plus one tail. And step and case two, or we just have uh, four heads, right? Okay, now three heads, one tail. We can have his head, 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 and then tail. Now, uh, well, the chance to get one hat is two third, chance two third, and two third, and this is one third, right? You say, okay, so this will be one third. Then we get the probability. So we get, okay, for this specific case, so probability with two of three, three times two of three times one of three. But in total, you see, you can shuffle around and then you have to multiply by uh, four, right? Because you can do hat, hat, tail, hat, tail, or had a tail, tail, I've had a tail, or let's say had tail, had 
hand, right? You can just shuffle around, right? You can just shuffle around. You got four cases, you got four uh, scenarios. And then you see what you get. You get is um, 32 over uh, 32 over 81, right? Get 32 over 81. Uh, now, if it's four heads, if it's four, it's head, 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 head. And then for each one, you get is the property, say you get the property is two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, and two thirds. And then we get for this case, the, the probability will be, probability will be two thirds times two thirds, right? And times two thirds times two thirds, which is 16 over 81. Okay, now finally, all you need to do is uh, you just combine them together. It's okay, let me combine them. So two cases, you combine them, right? So the final probability will be 32 over 81 plus 16 over 81, and this will be 48 over 81. Are you simplified? So this will be 16 over 27. Problem number 11, a man with the five keys uh, wants to open the gate of, um, of a tennis court. Exactly one key will open the door. He forgets which one is the right one and tries the key at a random. Assume that uh, the same key is not tried try twice, what's the probability that he tries normal three uh, keys? All right, so basically you have four keys, right? You have five keys. Uh, if he tries no more than three keys, that means case one, you have three cases. Either uh, the first uh, first try is the correct key, right? It's the correct key. Uh, first, try once. I say, okay, just try once. Once. And case two, he needs to try twice. And case three, he needs to try three times, right? Three times, exactly three times. Now, what's the probability? That if you try once is enough to get uh, the uh, right key, uh, the uh, the correct key. Let's say we have this is correct key, right? So it's the correct key. Uh, obviously, it's just uh, one choose five. Now, how about uh, he needs to try twice to get the uh, the correct key uh, by symmetry? The point is there's no difference, right? Whether you get the first key, you get the correct key on the first time or the second time. So we expect this is also will be one half, uh, one fifth. Or you can calculate, okay, try once, which means the first time is wrong. Uh, that will be uh, four or five, right? And then the second time it will be correct. So after you uh, after you say, okay, I got the wrong key. I know this guy's wrong. Then I, I need to choose from this four to get the correct. So it will be one or four. Again, if you use this way, you say you just get again, just get a one, one, one fifth. So the point is, um, regardless of which approach, you will see there's no difference. You get the first time or the second, and the probability all one fifth. Uh, this one is similar. Again, the probability will be one fifth. Right? So here I always talk about is the probability. All right. So then you see the total will be one or five times three. So it's uh, three fifths. Question number 12, Adam randomly forms a three digit number by using a three number flash cards two for six. What is the probability that the three digit number is divisible by four? So here we assume that uh, each number is used only once. Okay, now, uh, well, uh, the card six, if you flip around, it can be used as nine. Okay. We'll just use the uh, the formula, the basic formula. What's the probability? So probability equals the number of all possible three digit numbers, right? And then the, the uh, numerator of the number of all valid uh, numbers, three digit numbers. Now, when we say that numbers means it's divisible by four. Okay, um, well, we can look at, um, uh, two cases, uh, case one and case two. Case one means if we, we use uh, three numbers, two, four, six, or uh, case two is we use three numbers, two, four, and we flip around to use nine. And for this case, so we say, okay, so for this case, the total obviously three factorial, which is six, right? We just, uh, this is permutation. And valid ones, um, 
you see, to tell whether number is divisible by four, the divisible test is just look at the last, last two digits, right? So we consider that as two digit number and to tell whether divisible by four. Uh, then it's easy to see, we have two valid cases, which is 624 or 264. So the number is two. Uh, the next one is similar. If I use two for nine, again, the total will be three factorial, which is six and valid ones will be uh, 924, or the other one will be 924, and the other one will be um, will be uh, 4, nine, 4 and uh, 92, right? So these are the two um, uh, numbers that are divisible by 4. Okay, so then the answer for this is 2. All right, um, then we get a number of all three Possible will be six plus six, that's 12, that's all we have. And the number of uh, all past all valid numbers uh, divisible by four, this will be two plus two, which is four. Okay, so that fraction will be four over 12, that is one third. That's the probability. Uh, number 13, four boys of different height, when they line up in two rows to take a photo. If each row has two boys, what is the liability? What is the probability that each boy in the front row is shorter than the boy right behind it? Okay, so here we have two rows, right? So this is two rows. Let's say this is the uh, the front row, and this is the back row. Now we have four boys: one, two, three, four. Here, I one, two, three, four, just you uh, to uh, represent uh, the increase of height. The increase of height. Uh, well, we have to calculate the probability, right? Probability use the definition is the number of all uh, possible arrangements and number of all valid or desired uh, arrangement, right? The desired arrangement is that in the front row is shorter than the boy right behind it. Now the total, of the number of all possible arrangements is uh, clearly is four factorial, right? Because I have four people, basically four people shuffle around, which is 24. And then uh, a little bit more challenging is when you find the number of all valid arrangement. Now, obviously one has to be in the, uh, the, which is the shortest, right? So this is the shortest, and the four means the tallest, right? The tallest. Now, obviously, uh, the shortest one has to be in the front row, and the tallest row, tallest guy has to be in the, uh, in the back row. Let's find all possible scenarios, right? Let's do it, okay? Uh, well, if the one is here, and then we have the four, the four could be here, right? So this, okay, so the four could be here. And then two and, uh, three and a two, they can switch. So this could be three and a two, this old could be three and a two, doesn't matter, right? And then of course we can also uh, switch, um, we can also switch one to four, right? So say, okay, so this can, can be a uh, one, this and a four, and then we can switch three and two, three and two, right? So this is one way. And then of course we can also, um, to one four here. So this will be one four, and then three and two has to be three and two. And that's another one. Obviously there's another one, which is, uh, this is one, uh, this is one, right? So this is one, this is four, and this is three, and this is two. Okay, let's see how many we have. Here we have two ways. Um, here have two ways. This have two ways because you can switch this two. So here have one way, here's one way. Okay, so then in total you have, the pass for this will be two plus two plus one plus one, which is six. So in total, there are six um, uh, valid ways and the probability will be eventually six over 24, which is uh, which is one quarter, one quarter. Question number 14, uh, put three balls uh, labeled one, two, three into three boxes labeled one, two, three. Each ball has equal chance to go to uh, every box. What's the probability that uh, there are exactly one empty box? All right, so let's choose. So we have box one, we have box two, we have box three, 
and then we bow one, bow two, and bow three. Now each bow has equal chance to be put in uh, in every uh, box. Okay, uh, well, let's apply the formula. So the formula says probability equals the number of all possible arrangement arrangements and number of valid arrangement. Now here, valid arrangements means they are exactly one empty box, right? One empty box. Uh, well, the number of all possible arrangement by um, by a multiplication principle. So here we use the multiplication principle because each ball has three options. Right? Three options go to either box one, box two, or box three. And ball two also has three options, box one, box two, or box three. And both three also have three options, box one, box two, or box three. All right, so by multiplication principle, the total number arrangements, you just multiply them together, you get this 27, okay? And then now when you find the valid arrangements, uh, there are different ways to do it. Either you can just calculate directly the number of valid arrangements, or we can calculate uh, invalid ones. So here I choose to calculate invalid ones, all right? So let's calculate invalid ones. In that one, so you have two cases. Case one, right? We say, okay, so there are uh, case one, which means each box has one ball. And then for this case, it's basically just a permutation of three balls. So it's okay, this is three factorial, which is six, right? Okay, right, you have to go to three balls, put in three boxes, and each box is one ball. So the number of ways, just three factorial, right? Permutation. Case two is, um, one box has all three balls, right? And then obviously we have three options, right? Either all three balls go to box one, right? You say, okay, so for example, you have box, right? All three balls goes to uh, box one, right? All three balls go to box two, or all three balls goes to box three, right? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, then uh, we know uh, this will be a uh, total value case of six plus three, this will be nine. And then value cases here will be 27 minus nine, which, a, which is 18, right? Which is 18. So the, and that's the number of value cases. So that'll be 18 divided by 27, uh, which is two over three. Problem number 15. There are two boxes, box A and box B. Box A has one red ball and two blue balls. Box B has one blue ball and two red balls. First, the daisy randomly pick one ball. First of all, daisy first randomly pick one ball from box A and put it in box B. Then John randomly picks the ball from box B, uh, which, we, which we can consider step two, right? Uh, from box A. The question is, what is the probability that uh, um, John gets a red ball? All right, so this is a typical scenario to apply the multiplication principle, okay? So we use the multiplication principle for probability because it's naturally divided into two steps. So step one, it's performed by Daisy. Step two, it's performed by John. And the goal is to get a readable. All right, now for convenience, we look at the, the two cases. So case one, which is step one, that's Daisy gets a readable. And case two, it's a daisy gets a blue ball. Okay, now for this case, we have step one, daisy gets a red ball, and step two, right? Okay, now step one, the probability gets red ball, obviously is one third, and step two, that is after it gets red ball, so situation, what do we have? Uh, it's a three red ball and uh, one blue ball, right? And then you want to get uh, one red, uh, the probability obviously will be three over four, right? So it'll be three over four, and this is uh, this is one over four, right? Okay, so for the case one, by, by the multiplication principle, we multiply together. Step one is one third, and based on step one, uh, we get three red balls and one blue ball, and the chance to get a red ball is uh, three over four, so it's one, one quarter. Now let's look at the case two, step one, uh, Daisy gets a blue ball, so which is two thirds. Now, if it's got a blue ball, then the scenario, the scenario 
for step of st step two will be two red ball and two blue balls, right? And then if you want to get a red ball, the probability will just be one half, right? Just one half. Then the uh, the chance is what uh, is what is one third for the uh, for the second one. Now finally, all we need to, all we need to do is you combine the third these two cases, right? Okay. So then if you combine them together, the final probability prob it will be one quarter plus one third, which is seven over seven over 12. Question number 16. Below is the frequency plot showing the number of slices of pizzas ordered by each student on a baseball team. Only whole slices are ordered. Find the median number of order slices in distribution. Okay, all right. So here, what we need to do is just list out all the um, um, pizzas ordered by each player. Okay, so here we have one, there's only one, and there are two twos, and three, there are six three, and there are four, there are seven, uh, there are seven four slices, and we have um, four, five slices, and we have uh, three six slices, and we have two seven slices. Okay, then we get the total number of players, which is the same as the total number of numbers, right? In this sequence, equals one plus two, plus six, plus seven, plus four, plus three, plus two, which is, so he has nine, uh, which is 25. Okay, so now if you have 25 numbers, how you find the median? Here we are looking for is the median, right? If it's 25, then what do we have is, uh, this is all numbers. So it's exactly the one in the middle. So we have four, we have for 12 here, and this is one to 12, and this is 13. So 13, and there's 14 to 12 to 15. Okay, so the point is the 13th one will be the uh, the median. Now let's see which one is the 13. So this is two, this is three, and 13 will be here. So this is four, okay. So this, so the number is, the median will be number four. Question number seven. What is the sum of medians of all non-empty subsets of one, two, three? For example, one, two is a non-empty subset with the median 1.5. Okay, uh, so what do we do is let's list out all the uh, non-empty subsets. Okay, we have one, this is one, this is two, and this is three, right? And then we have one, two, we have one, three, and we have two, three, and the last one will be one, two, three. Okay, now let's find uh, the medians. Let's find the medians of each one, okay? So for this one, obviously it will be one, this will be two, and this will be three, because only one number. Uh, this median is even one that is in the, uh, the median is the average of two, okay? So this, uh, this is 1.5, this will be two, and this will be 2.5, and this will be two. Okay, so what are we looking for? We are looking for the sum, right? Okay, so then we get the sum equals one plus two plus three plus 1.5 plus two plus 2.5 and the plus two. Okay, so what do we get? Uh, this will be six. Uh, this will be together is four. Okay, so four plus four, which is, which is, uh, which is 14, right? Which is 14. Now, uh, okay, so we get uh, 14. There actually, there is a quicker way to do it. Okay, so this I leave as an exercise. So what you can do is you see, there actually is a pairing. This pair, this is one, this is three. So you get a pair, you get is four. And this, this is also a pair, you see, you get is four, right? Okay, so here is, uh, we get four. Uh, this one, 2.5. And then you have, you see, this is also, you can do the uh, the pairing, you get is also four. And this one I can do by itself, this can do by itself. Okay, so uh, the point is you can find a suitable pairing to uh, to compute uh, the uh, the sum of medians. And this one can apply, apply to more numbers. Apply to uh, more uh, numbers. Here we only have three number one, two, three. So you can just list out all um, scenarios. Okay. 
Uh, question number 18. Uh, five, uh, at least all five uh, prime numbers have a median 12, have a mean 12, um, and also a median which is 13, and a unique mode. What is the sum of all possible values of the mode? Okay, so here we have five prime numbers, right? So let's list, uh, let's, uh, list them from the least to the largest. I don't know that because it's five numbers, the median is the middle one. Okay, so we get this one is 13. And then we know if you add them together, which is the total, the total is the average multiple five, which is 60. From here, we, we derive, okay, because it's five number, right? You cannot have five, because this is even number. 60 is even. So we derive one of them is even. One of them is even number. Otherwise, if you have five R numbers, you get together, if you add them together, you get a five R numbers. So one of them is even. So that means uh, one of, that means the first one is two. Okay, so now we mean, uh, this implies the first one is two. Okay, so now we immediately get the first one is two. And then we have the, uh, the uh, uh, remaining three, and it says there's unique mode. Right? So case one, we do is the mode is not 13, right? It's not 13. Then we have this is B, this is B, and this is A, right? So we get, okay, A plus twice or B because there's only one mode. So the others have to be different. Right? So B is the mode. Okay, so then this one plus together will be 16 minus 15, which is 45. And then because A and B, they're all prime numbers, right? So A and B, they are all prime numbers. Um, it's 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 not it's not hard to to find to solve this equation. We'll get a B is uh, seventeen, and then A is eleven. So that's one scenario. Or B is nineteen, and then A is seven. Okay. So these are two cases where the mode is not thirteen. Now case two, is it possible the mode is thirteen? I right, we have to check that. Well, if the mode is 13, then we'll get it two. So you, you find it, this is actually possible, 13 and 13, right? Okay, um, and then this is uh, 19, and this is 19. Okay, let's see, this works, right? 39 plus two plus 19 is 16. All right, so that's the case, the mode is 13. So we have the mode is, uh, all the possible values of the mode is 17, uh, this will be 19, and uh, it's a 13. So the answer is 13 plus 19 plus 17, uh, the total will be 49. Question number 19. A number of students are participating in a math computation that has 15 questions. In the following table, uh, the first M, low M, the first low N uh, represents uh, the number of correct answers and the second row, Sn, represents the number of students who have solved n questions correctly. Right? For example, uh, for example, um, there are seven students who didn't solve any problem, and there are eight students, each of them solved exactly one question, and there are 10 students, each of them solved exactly two questions. Okay, uh, now we know the average number of problems solved by students who have solved four or more is six, the average number of problems solved by students who have solved 11 or less is four. The question of how many students have participated in this math computation. All right, let's use a little algebra, okay? Uh, let's, uh, let's put X, so I put the X, it's right here. So what is X? So I put X is uh, the number of the total number of students uh, who solved who solved, who solved the uh, uh, four to 10 questions problems. So that's X. So X is the collection, is the number of students who solved uh, four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 problems. Okay, so that's X. And then I put, I put the Y, I put the Y as, the uh, number of problems solved, the, the number of all problems solved by this 
uh, X students. By this X students. Okay, so that's why, right? So we combine all the problems solved by these X students. And now we can find, uh, we, can, we can list the equation, right? Okay, so the first, the average number of students sold, so we sell, sold four or more, so it's right here. So this is, will be one, right? So this will be one, okay? Uh, it's six, the average is, it's, uh, it's a six. Okay, so from here, we can um, write down the equation, uh, the average number times total number. So there will be X plus 15 plus six plus three plus one, uh, equals the total number, so which will be y plus 12 times 15 plus 13 times 6 uh, plus 14 times 3 and then uh, plus 15 times 1. Okay, so that's the first equation. Now let's look at the second equation. The second thing says uh, 2. The number of students uh, who have solved the students who have solved 11 or less, so it's from here, so from 11 or less, so over here, the average is uh, 4. Okay. And then let's let's uh, let, let's uh, write out the equation. So average is four. So x plus seven plus eight plus ten plus twenty one. This will be y plus uh, one times eight plus two times ten and plus three times uh, twenty one. Okay. So then all we need to do is we need to uh, let's simplify these two equations. Okay, so then let's uh, let, let's uh, simplify the equation. Here, what we have, uh, this will be just uh, twenty-five, and here, what we have, this will be uh, forty-six. Right, forty-six. Okay. Now, uh, those things, let's combine them together. Uh, we'll get is three hundred fifteen, and those numbers, if you combine together, we get ninety-one. All right. And then if you take the difference of the two equations, right? Let's take the difference, just minus subtract, and then you see y will cancel with y. So we'll, we, what you get will be get 2x minus, you get 2 minus 934 uh, equals uh, 3 minus 91. So it's uh, 2, 2, 4. Okay, so from here you get a 2x, right? So okay, so then you get 2x equal 258, and then we get x is 129. Okay, we'll get an x at 29. All right, so if x gets 29, then we get a total number, total number of students, participants will be 129, obviously participants, right? One time plus the others. So seven plus eight plus 10 plus 21 plus 15 plus six plus three plus one. I already did this. Uh, this guy is just 46 and this one is uh, 25. Okay, so finally, you get this will be 200. Okay, all right. Uh, question number 20. Uh, today, Starbucks sells uh, uh, 300, uh, 352 cups to uh, 140 customers, each of whom buys at least one cup of coffee. How many different values are possible for the uh, for the median number of cups of coffee uh, bought each uh, each customer. All right, so here we have one hundred forty customer, right? Okay, so then you see in order to have this um, in order to have this uh, median median number, what you have is right here. So this is you look at is from one and all the way to. Um, Okay, so we have one, uh, 140 customers. So it's a one to uh, 90. Uh, this is customer one to customer uh, 69. And then we, here we have, here we have uh, 70 customer 71, and then all the way to, uh, this is 72, right? So then they're all the way to um, uh, 100, uh, 140. Okay, so the median will just the average of these two. If we do the average of these two. Okay, and in total, what do we know? Uh, in total, the number of cups total equals 352. Okay. Here we list all the customers in the increasing order from the least to the largest. Uh, here says that each, each one, each, each one bought at least one cup of coffee. Okay, 
Now let's try to find what is the um, what is the largest possible value. So what's the largest possible value of median? This one equals the median. Now, because each customer bought at least one, right? So we say, okay, so let's say for the first nine, bought each one. And then let's say, okay, so this will be 69. Our remaining part for the, uh, for the 40, 71 here will be 352 minus 69. What do we get? It's a 283. Then we get the largest possible value of a median cannot go beyond, has to be less or equivalent. Okay, so then here we have the largest possible value of a median because uh, because here we have uh, those are the number of customers is uh, is seventy one is seventy one, um, and then the total uh, number of soda bought by this seventy one is um, weighs um, um, at the most uh, two hundred eighty three right. So then we get um, the largest possible value of median will be two hundred eighty three divided by uh, seventy one. We know this is less than four, so it's uh, it's just three point. Uh, something. And we know the value of median is either integer or something 0.5, right? So this means it's less or equal to 3.5. Okay, so from here, we get, we say, okay, from here, we get uh, possible, we can list all possible values uh, of median. Uh, it's not from one because at least it's one, right? According to the requirement of the problem. Then the next one could be 1.5, then could be 2, 2.5 and three and a 3.5. Okay, so then we get all the possible values. Uh, there are six um, uh, possible values of the median. So the answer is six.